Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to simulate and, um, and create a motion study of a ball rolling down the slider and landing on the bucket, as you can see here. Um, there are three components. We have the slider, the bucket, and the ball that we are going to be creating, each one of them. And um, I have already created the dimensions required for each component, as you can see here. So let's start with the uh, with the slider. So the slider has a overall dimension of 200 inches by 248. The radius at this intersection is 100 inches on both locations. So and 30 inches right here. So with those dimensions, let's begin. So let's create a new part. Dimensions are going to be in inches. So just double check and make sure that inch, pounds, and seconds are selected. Using the uh, front plane, let's create a new sketch. And let's sketch a, uh, the, the two lines that we need. So if you recall, so this is a 200 inches on the X direction and this one here total of uh, 248, but we are going to uh, create two sections here. So 200 and then um, we can create this incline line. So this dimension here is 48. And uh, the height of it is 30 inches, uh, as, as you can see here on the, on the dimensions, 30 inches and 200 and 248. So now let's do the radius. So with this, we can check on, we can click on the uh, fillet command and select the two lines and change the radius to, um, to 100. Let's hit OK. Similarly, we can select the other two. And these are also 100. 100. Now let's hit OK. So going back to the drawing, uh, we need to create the profile of the slider. And this is just a half of a circle as you can see here and the diameter is 30 millimeters with a thickness of half an inch and for that we are going to uh, create a reference plane so we can start creating the circle at this location so let's go to the um, features uh, reference geometry and plane the reference will be the top plane and the height of that is the height of the new uh, plane will be 200 millimeter uh, inches let's hit okay so if we look at the from the from the side view we see that that plane is exactly at the tip of the line so we're going to use that to create our profile or circle profile. So let's create a circle and dimension this. This is 30 inches in diameter. We only need um, we only need half of that circle, so we can just trim this. And um, let's create a um, offset uh, relation to that. So let's select that. And here, if you recall, this is supposed to be half an inch. And if you zoom in, you see the the end half being cap. That's because we have this option selected. So if you uncheck that, it'll open up the sketch. So in our case, we want that to be closed. And uh, we can hit OK. Now we can use the, um, let's go to features. Let's 
hit OK one more time. Let's go to Features and use the Swept Bus Space. And the Sketch is already selected, and now we need the Path. And um, that's the path that we want it to be. And um, we can even um, create a, a, a thickness to that, but um, we already have a thickness, so we don't have to... Um, we don't have to uh, worry about it, but for just to show you, if you click on this, um, you can kind of see now there is a uh, a thickness on um, on that sketch, and um, we can change directions, and um, we can actually we can just let's use that thickness for just for you to see how it looks. So now we have the, um, the slider, we can, we can uh, change the color here. Let's make this, um, let's make it green. That looks fine to me and let's hit okay. Now we can save this, uh, this component. So let's save. Uh, next we are going to uh, create the, the bucket. Let me bring the bucket dimensions. So we have a uh, 30 inches in height, and the outside diameter is 100 inches, and the inside 96. That means that the wall thickness is two inches for the bucket. So let's create a new a new part. For the bucket, I'm going to use the top plane and let's create a circle. So the outside, the outside diameter is 100 inches. Now we can hit OK and let's give it a thickness. If you recall, this is uh, 30 inches in height and we can keep the blind direction. So now we can use the, the shell command to give a, uh, a wall thickness to this uh, component. So let, let's click on shell and now select the face for the first selection. And uh, you can even click on the preview here so you can kind of see how it's going to look. So the wall thickness, this is where you put the wall thickness. So this is two inches. And let's hit OK. So now we have the bucket created and now let's save. We can call this uh, bucket one. The next component that we need is the ball, the projectile. And this is a uh, 24 inch uh, sphere. So as you can see here, so using that information, we can create a new part. And I can use either plane for this. I'll use the front plane. And um, front plane sketch. Let's select the circle. And let's provide a uh, dimension. And this is 24 inches in diameter. We can. Um, we can cut this in half so we can revolve around this axis. So with that, let's use the revolve feature and select the, that axis to uh, for the rotation 360 degrees and line options shall be selected. So that's it, okay? And uh, we can provide a, uh, let's give it a, some colors here. It's um, probably, you um, can select that. Looks fine to me and let's hit okay. And we can, um, we can save this component um, ball one. So looking at the, um, 
at the assembly uh, we have all the components already so now let's create the the assembly for preparation for the simulation so let's click on new now let's hit a new assembly uh, the first thing I always like to do is make sure that we have the the right units and inches and let's click OK let's go to insert components and hit on browse and the first one is going to be the base slider without clicking anywhere else just click on the check mark this will fix the component and uh, you can confirm that by looking at the F letter at that particular part so we have the slider now let's bring the the bucket you can either select it from here or click on browse and select bucket and um, now let's provide some mate to that bucket so I want I, I want to use the the planes so I can use the slider front plane with the um, with the bucket front plane holding the, the holding control key and make those two uh, coincident. Now, uh, similarly, we can use the top plane with uh, top plane of the bucket and make those coincident as well. So now we need to provide a distance, um, a reference distance to that bucket so it is completely fixed. Um, for that, we can do the similar thing. We can use the right plane of the slider with the right plane of the bucket and provide a distance right here. We can make this um, 400 inches so there is going to be a, a distance of 400 inches from here to the center of of the bucket now we need to bring the um our moving component which is the ball so insert component browse and select ball one so one Thing to notice here is that the, in order to create a motion study this ball has to be um, floating floating around so it cannot be fixed otherwise the motion is not going to work so first we're going to create some um, some mate to place the ball and then at the end we will suppress or delete those to uh, before we go to the mo motion study. So this is what I mean. So first, um, I want to place the ball somewhere in that area at the beginning of the slider. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top plane of the ball with the um, with the top plane of the um, slider and create a distance of uh, so if you recall the height of the slider is 200 so we'll use the same dimension so now the center of the ball is aligned with the center of the with the top slider now let me um, center that ball on that slider so let's select now the uh, top plane of the ball with the um, with the front plane of the um, slider so now as you can see the ball is um, centered on, on that slider so if I want to move this uh, ball is not going to um, it's not going to let me if I want to move it up or down it's not going to let me um, and that's because I have a cons uh, a mate applied to the ball. So 
So we need to uh, delete that mate before we go to motion. So we only use the mate to place it. So after you do that, we can erase the mate and um, the ball will stay there. So we can um, we can either suppress or delete. It's up to you. So now I can I can move it up and down. Okay, so now it looks like we are ready to proceed with the um, with a simulation. Uh, let me save before we go there and click on save. To access the motion study, we can either use the um, this uh, motion study already created for us, or we can create a new one. So let's create a new motion study. And this we can name it um, projectile one and hit enter. Uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, change this to motion analysis. If you don't have that on your, um, you can just click on the um, settings and go to add-ins. And then here, make sure that the, um, the SOLIDWORKS motion is checked. So once we are there, we can go to the uh, motion study properties so we can uh, update a few things. So the frames per second, um, I'm going to make this 50. It depends on your capability of your computer. Um, 50 uh, seems to work fine with my computer. Um, the other option that I'm going to select is that uh, use precise contact. This will give us better um, simulations and we can hit OK. Now let's um, add some gravity gravity to the uh, study so we can click on that gravity and the gravity will be acting on the Y direction, downward direction. So let's select and the um so this 386 inches per second square is the same as the 32.2 feet per second square so you can you can leave it there or change it but it's going to be the same and let's hit okay next we need to add some contact to the um to the uh, simulation so the um, to do that we can click on this um, contact icon and we have two options here solid bodies and curves so solid body bodies is going to add three-dimensional contact between all the moving components to the motion study so the curves is just for the uh, two-dimensional contact we don't have two dimensional contacts here. So let's just keep on the solid bodies. Right here, we're going to select all the components that we would like to have a contact relationship. So the three, and you can see here those three. The material that we're going to be using, um, this depends on your application. For now, let's select the steel dry meaning there is no lubrication on any of the components. And um, there are more options here, such as friction. If you know the friction of the two components, you can always put that there. This is the dynamic friction, and this is uh, the static friction. And you can, um, you can use the uh, coefficient. Um, you can change the coefficient by sliding this uh, option here. Um, the other options that we have right now is the uh, impact, um, stiffness, uh, damping, penetration, and restitution coefficient. The, um, the coefficient of uh, restitution is, this is just the ratio of the initial relative speed between the two objects after they collide after they collide. So it normally ranges from zero to one. Uh, one me it means that this is a perfectly elastic collision and zero 
is um, inelastic. So for this particular problem, we are not going to be using any of that. Uh, we are just going to stick with the material and um, let's hit OK. Now let's give it um, the time in seconds for how long we want this motion to run. Uh, for now, we can um, just going to leave it at 3.5 seconds. That's what it looks like. So after you do that, we can click on the calculate button here. So let's click on that. And you can kind of see how the motion study is, um, is going to look. So it'll take a few seconds. This depends on how many seconds you put the, you apply here on this section. So so after it finishes the calculation, we can um, we can hit play and we can see the, the motion of the rolling ball uh, sliding down the, the slider. So right here, we have um, a few more options. We can uh, play mode, playback mode options. So we can either do a loop. This means that, you know, if, after you finish the 3.5 seconds, it'll go back to the beginning and keeps running the loop, as you can see here. The other option we have is the um, the reciprocate. And it's going to reverse after it finishes. So that's a uh, cool option there. Uh, we can even um, change the, the views. So let's say you want to see it from the front view we can select the from view and um, or even the from the side let's reduce the speed a little bit so let's make this 0.5 so we so we can have a chance to to look at the simulation so let's see it from the side so you can see it better uh, so now the other thing that we can do here is you can even um, plot what is the maximum height distance that the ball jumps right after the, it leaves the, the slider and the travel distance on the X direction as well. So for that, we, can, we have these um, results and plots. We can click on that. And right here, we're going to select displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And first, let's, let's take a look at the uh, linear displacement on the, um, on the X component, only on the X direction. For this one here, we're going to select the ball, which is the moving part. And now let's hit OK. So looking at this, um, plot, we can see that at zero, zero seconds, there is no displacement on the X direction. And um, it starts display uh, a displacement after 0.69 seconds, probably. And that's and that's when um, when it reaches the uh, this section right here. So we can even play and, and you can see the red line and um, the maximum displacement on the X direction is about 436 uh, inches and that makes sense because if you recall we placed the the bucket at about 400 inches 
from the from the slider so 400 is up to the center of the bucket and then you add a few more inches so that makes sense so, so now let's take a look at the uh, displacement on the y direction so we should be able to see the the jumping height of the ball right after it leaves the, the slider so let's click on plot and um, select displacement linear displacement and now we, we select the y component of the ball select the ball now let's hit okay so as we expected right here so the ball starts at 200 inches and then it travels down the slider and this is the horizontal section that we see that we see right here this is the horizontal section right there so there is no displacement on the y direction so and then it goes back up to the uh, to 48 inches this is when it leaves the the slider and um and right here is i assume this is when it enters the bucket and we can even play the simulation and you can see this red line going along along the path so so this is the because you can see so now it's jumping right there and then bounces a little bit and then it'll rest on the uh, on the bucket so let's do this in a slower motion here let's do it one more time so you can see better so slide down horizontal section now it's jumping to that maximum height right there and lands on the bucket so the other thing that we can do um, is change the um, a few parameters so let's go back to the contact so if you recall um, actually let's go back to the contact right here so edit feature this is the one that we chose um, at the beginning so if you recall we selected still dry meaning there there was no lubrication on on these components so now let's see what happens when you apply some lubrication let's select the steel and then greasy uh, option so let's hit okay so every time you make a change you need to uh, recalculate so let's recalculate as we expected um so now all these components are lubricated so the ball is gonna get a um, higher speed and because of the higher speed now the ball is not gonna land on the bucket is it's going to uh, is going further of the original location and um we can take a look at this from the side view and this is a uh, this is a powerful tool to um, to estimate the the landing landing height of the ball or or the velocity it reaches um, so this concludes this tutorial and i hope you enjoy thank you for watching